Hello, I'm Eric Snodgrass, and thank you for watching this Ag Forecast for South America, brought to you by Nutrient Ag Solutions. Well, last Thursday night when I was producing the video, we didn't quite get the update yet on the planting progress or the harvesting progress in Mato Grosso, the biggest kind of producing state in the north. So I just want to show them to you here uh, on Monday evening. So we're looking here at soybean harvest, and right now, uh, according to um, you know the Brazilian government, they're sitting at about 47% done. Uh, and last year was about 11%. Remember, we were about six weeks delayed in some places with planting that soybean crop a year ago. On the planting of the Safrina corn crop, again, we're above the five-year average at almost 42%, where a year ago we were only 8.2%, and that really set the Safrina crop up for having a lower production number based upon how late things were. This year, the discussion is all about drought. I want to just give you some long-term perspective once again. We're going to go out back to the standard precipitation uh, index measurements here, but I'm going to show you the three-month values. So again, the main idea here is that Brazil's northern growing areas here, where about 60% of the crop is grown, that 60% of that soybean crop was actually quite wet, Mato Grosso experiencing near ideal conditions. It was the 40% that was grown south from southern Mato Grosso do Sul through Parna, even over to Sao Paulo, but down to Santa Catarina and Rio Grande do Sul that was jeopardized. And according to the CHIRPS data set, you can see that the three months, November, December, and January, okay, uh, this was some of the driest conditions on record. That's a significant portion of the crop that was uh, under uh, incredible stress here from a lack of moisture. Uh, from there, let's go take a look now at, at Argentina. And what you've got here would be the same time period, November, December, January. We can see that the worst situation was north near Paraguay. Uh, and the reason why you look right in this area and see near normal precipitation you got to remember, most of that came in about a week time period after January 15th. Well, maybe it was about 10 days uh, after January 15th where they had some very heavy rainfall in this particular region. Now, just thinking about this, I'm going to go check one other resource. It's uh, the GRACE uh, satellite data here. And what I want to do is let's get a good look here for current data on South America. All right, so their latest was only on January 31st. That's groundwater. Let's go look at roots on soil moisture. So you can still see Paraguay, northern Argentina, you know, southern Brazil is the area that still seems to be struggling based upon uh, this. And maybe it's worthwhile doing this real quick. Uh, we can go back to their archive. Let's find where the archive is here. And there it is. And I want to just go back and look at a year ago at this time, first of all. So let's go back to February 8th. And let's not look at CONUS, but let's instead look at South America. And again, a year ago at this particular point, so this would have been for February 2021, remember how extremely wet it was in this region? What a flip-flop this past year. We were drier farther to the north. And this was the area we were discussing that was so late because of the late onset of the monsoon. So just a couple of different things to just kind of think about here. In fact, let's go look at root zone soy moisture as well. Um, that, that's just um, a part of the component uh, or the part of the differences we've been seeing here. Now, just to make a point to this, I'm going to go back before all that heavy precipitation came in and just show you again the extensiveness of the drought in the south. And that's just the setup. That's just for perspective. Now, where we're going is really important based upon that because we've now seen the weekend models uh, really trending in this direction, and Mondays, the two runs on Monday didn't change this at all. Wettest conditions are coming out of part of Goyas, southern Tocantins, but getting over here into Bahia and mainly over at Minas Gerais. So near normal in Mato Grosso, but extremely wet compared to average east. You get into Mato Grosso do Sul, towards Sao Paulo, and every place south of there, including the entirety of the Parana River all the way down to Argentina, and we're going to see, at best, limited scattered storms. Very dry trend in the weekend model runs that continued on Monday. What's going on here is this. As we play this forward throughout this week, we see a stalled out frontal boundary here. That's going out there to Wednesday into Thursday and Friday. That's the region on which we're going to see the heaviest storms. We have a very weak low that's trying to drag a front through, possibly bringing some isolated showers and storms on Saturday getting into Sunday. They may move over Uruguay in southern, well, Rio Grande do Sul. But after that, a high pressure builds back in. See it? And that's where we continue to see this area drier. So what I've got for you here in this forecast is in this area, the 
chances of precip are going to be limited on scattered storms from weak fronts. And then as you get north of it, right in through this area, that's where the frontal boundary stalls near normal precipitation over toward Mato Grosso. Stretching this out though, I want to just pay attention to what's going on in the kind of the, the tropics overall. And what we do have is the MJO reset back into phase three, which is basically in this area. Models are predicting this to move through phases four and five. So we're gonna to have to watch to see what that means for the best rising motion, which is happening here right now. And because there's good rising motion here, there's subsidence south, and that's part of the reason why you get some higher pressure that's forming in that area. Now, if the MJO does, in fact, come out into phases four and five, this would mean later in the month of February, getting into March, we should expect higher pressure and drier conditions across Brazil's north and east. And at this point, though, through February 21st, the models are just kind of carrying the wetter signal they have now into week two. And where it's drier now, they're carrying that into week two as well. This, again, being the ECMWF week two forecast. But I'm curious about beyond that. Because from today through the 9th of March, the wettest conditions are here and it's very dry to the south. Now watch what happens as we let this 30-day sliding window move through the middle of March, which is here, and then expand this toward the end of March. Do you see how this area continues to kind of grow in the model? That would suggest something's going on with the MJO phase 5 because that would indicate more drier conditions north. But southern Brazil, Argentina still showing a strong dry signal in the models going out pretty far here into the month of March. Now thinking about that, I'm going to pull up some of the new data, the March, April, May forecast. Now this came out uh, just today from the Europe, excuse me, this is the National Multimodel Ensemble. And interestingly enough, they have above average precipitation for fall, March, April, May here, much drier to the south. And I think about that and I say, well, that doesn't really make a lot of sense to me. And here's why I say that. Because March, April, and May, when you stuff cold water in Nina region one and two, just tends to favor drier conditions here. If it's wet, it's east. There's drier conditions in Paraguay and Uruguay. And no real strong correlation for Argentina just yet. And that's what we've got. The La Nina is still here and it's fading, but it's still strong. Comparatively, looking at ocean temperatures in this part of the Pacific, Nina region 1 plus 2. And the European model suggests that that area is going to continue to stay that way, but fade into May, June, July. So we're going to be done with this La Nina by the time we get into South America's winter and North America's summer. That's what makes me think that the European might have the best handle on this. So this is the brand new long range update, February, March, and April. Watch what happens as we slide this forward just a month here. Look at March, April, May. We have a significant portion, better than 80% of all of Brazil's growing area for corn, soybeans, and cotton, wheat, you know, th this area right in through here, that's now got below average precipitation. You know, it still appears that to the north, that's gonna be our best scenario, but the models were very aggressive or they were very persistent keeping what they were initialized with, which remember, was this going forward in the longer range. But let's go ahead and take a look out here. This is now April, May, and June, and then May, June, and July. And as we suggested, it would appear that because of the fading La Nina, we would get an early slowdown to the monsoon. And the models are trying to hint at something like that, which is what I'm gonna to have to continue to watch uh, and observe as we go forward. So as my latest update, I'm going to watch it this week and we're going to pay close attention to that MJO signal. Uh, and I think that's going to be critical to figuring out how the moisture is going to return to the monsoonal circulation if it does. So we'll talk about it soon. Thanks.